not opposed to that. So let me do this. Um, see how this goes. Can you see my screen? My presentation? Yes. Okay. So let me do this. I'm, I have to get to, hold on a second. My Zoom boxes are in the way of, there we go, of starting the presentation. Okay. So talking about finding a sweet spot for studying. So um, I know this is easier said than done. You know, diminished distractions is the first slide. And, and as you've already said, Alondra and Wendy, there, there are multiple distractions to deal with, um, whether there are children at home that are, you know, the homeschooling, I'm here. And then when I get home, I realize that what, what a overwhelming um, task it is to keep other people on task with their remote learning. It's, it's really challenging. And then there's house stuff going on. And then there's all this school stuff. And what I've seen from talking to a lot of students is there's just a lot coming at you, even just from IBCC. Um, people are using Blackboard in different ways. You're using multiple platforms. And it's just a lot to keep track of. And when you do have study time, you've really got to harness it. So I know it might be difficult, but some things that I, that I looked in over and over and over again when I was preparing for this presentation are some of the first things I'm going to talk about is the power of habit, of setting times that you, you make a habit as best you can every day to say, this is study time. This is what I'm doing today. This is my day for this class. This is my time for this class and making a habit of it. And that takes some time to get into. And I know that's probably gonna get thrown out the window in different ways for different reasons. But the more you can control that, the better you're gonna feel about taking control of things. I'm also using peak power time. And that means for you, uh, you all know when your brain is, is working the best or when you have um, the best window of opportunities to work and you're gonna have to seize that. Um, I, for me, to study at 10 o'clock at night would never be a thing. I couldn't keep my eyes open. Um, so you have to know when you've got your pockets of day where your brain is working best, but that also match with whatever else is going on in your house. And even if they're small pockets, then you have to be strategic about matching your tasks with your energy level. So if you've got a small pocket of concentrated time and you say you've got an hour somewhere at your peak time, then know that if that is your peak time when your brain's working, your house is relatively quiet, you've got some me time, put the hardest tasks in there. So match those tasks, because all of you are doing tasks that take full on energy, and then you've got some tasks that are extraneous, right? You can, you can, they're, they're not exactly busy work, but they're not, they don't take the brain drain that some other classes will. So try to, to match those tasks with your energy level and stick them at peak times during your day. And as much as you can, make a routine of that every week. Um, another thing, um, Alondra, this might help um, with you is a couple pieces of getting rid of the clutter. And by clutter, what I mean is physical clutter and mental clutter. So I, I am distracted continually by what I like to call visual noise. And that around me means if I'm at home and one of my boys' pair of socks are laying in the middle of the living room, I just, I, I can't, I can't focus. I can't, everything has to kind of have a spot. So before you sit down, try and clear out a space or try to navigate a space for you and, and organize it and get it clear of that visual noise that's going to distract you. Little pieces of this and that out and around and have your tools of the trade ready. So if you have a little bucket, a little carrier with your pens, your highlighters, everything you need, have that ready to go. Even if that's portable, if your spots are portable, have something that you can take with you. Um, the mental noise is um, all that stuff like laundry and cooking supper and um, running people to appointments and getting yourself to places like this. What I think is really helpful is getting that, downloading that all out of your head before you sit down. Because if you have small pockets of time, you don't have time 
to go between what am I, you know, what else do I have to do and then concentrating on your work. So I recommend before you sit down, writing out a to do list. So you don't have to keep rotating that stuff in your mind. Um, also, doing a worry list. Um, I found that in COVID world, um, I, I don't have a diagnosis of anxiety or anything like that. But I, I can I can worry myself about everything all all the time, all the time. I'm worried about everybody and every single thing. And I think that's just the nature of this beast. I, I don't because we're living in such uncertain times. And what I've had to do is, um, you know, create a list that that I download that stuff. And I put it on a list to just say, I, I've got to set it aside. And once you put it down and specify it, that can clear some space. So you don't have to keep rotating that stuff either in your head. So those are two little pieces. Um, but if you've seen me present before, you know that um, downloading information out of your brain leaves space for other stuff to get in. And they found that people do better you know, on tests and things like that when they take the time to download onto paper the things that are swirling in their heads. So even if you're not taking a test, but you have to concentrate on taking notes from a textbook or you have to concentrate on a lecture, getting that stuff out of your head can be helpful. I don't know if anybody, well, maybe I'll say the last point on here and I'll see if anybody has anything to add. Um, and then, you know, we talk about a distraction right environment. Sometimes people emphasize a distraction free environment and all of you um, who are here, some of you I know are moms. Um, some of you, you know, I'm sure aren't living by yourself in a bubble. Um, a distraction free environment isn't a thing. I mean, it's, it's just not a thing. You have to figure out what's distraction right for you. What can you handle as far as noise? Um, and, and create that environment as best you can. I used to need almost solid peace and quiet with my ears shut when I was really trying to concentrate. So I would have to either, you know, find a space at, in, at, in my dorm room or I'd go to the library or something where I, I had that. But for other people, if distraction right is having background noise, having a little action moving on, you know, around you, if you can handle some of the visual noise, fine. But you have to decide what works for you and, and create a bubble that way for you. Before I move to the next slide, does anybody have any words of wisdom that they want to add to like the diminished distractions piece, things that they've done that have worked for them? Uh, I actually have, uh, specifically recently, uh, I've noticed that um, with my homework, a lot of it, if it's harder to do and I don't, I'm struggling with it, I tend to want to be distracted just because it's distressing me that I can't like work on a problem and understand it. So a lot of the time when I've been trying to do is uh, making time with like a tutor that like can walk me through it and I'll actually focus because there's another person like going through it with me. Yep. I think that's a good strategy for multiple reasons. Like you said, it keeps your focus. And then one thing I'm going to emphasize, I'll just say it now because it's on the slide later, is getting help makes you a more efficient learner. So if you've been resisting that up to this point, like checking in with a tutor or um, your instructors all have five office hours a week that they're supposed to be available to you, checking in with them or check it, connecting with a writing center person or anybody who can help you. It, it, it does multiple things. It keeps you focused and makes you more efficient. It, it, that time you would spend like thinking about pro math problems, like how do I do this? How do I do this? Could just be taken care of if you just ask the question. Anybody else have any tips? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Um, I bring this up every time I think I do a presentation. Um, I think probably one of the biggest distractors is devices. We're, we're all on our computers all the time now. Um, we're, and we've got our phones next to us hooked in. But what I'll say is if you really wanna be efficient and there are no big burning emergency issues in your life, turn your phone off, <laughs> put it away. And if you can block out what's coming in on your computer, there are all sorts of screen management devices and I put a link in here to those. 
um, depending upon which device you have, what you're using. Because um, every time you look away, it takes you double the time to get back focused once you look away. Your brain is meant to monotask. It's not meant to multitask, even though all of us, because we are all, we are all still females here, right? We have, we let anybody of the opposite sex, yeah. they're not invited, no. Um, we, we, we've learned to be multitaskers because that's the way you survive. But when you're trying to put information in your brain, um, it, it doesn't work. You think it does, but it's not getting in there and staying there. So put your stuff away. Um, another way to keep yourself on track, um, even if you feel like your environment around you is a bit chaotic, um, one way to feel like you're in control is, again, downloading things and getting them um, onto paper. And I'm totally recommending for every single person I talk to a wall calendar or a big desk calendar that's got a month in advance so you can see your long due dates. Um, a, a daily to-do list or a homework planner is great on a daily basis to go in and look, but I am advocating firmly and repeatedly to people to spend a day on the weekend, like a Saturday or Sunday, go into each one of your classes, print off your syllabi, and if you can't print them, I'm willing to help print and mail them to you. I know Diane and Cynthia can do it too. Um, print them off go through them and line up your week with what's coming at you. That will help you be more efficient. It will eliminate the guesswork. And when you are controlling your time like that, your time doesn't control you anymore. You are managing it. I would love to hear what people are doing to manage all that's coming at you. Are you using desk calendars, wall calendars? Are you using anything on your phones? Can you give tips or hints to anybody else? I'm using a, a planner and okay. I do exactly what you do. I take a day and I go through all my classes and see what's coming up and I put that in that planner. Otherwise I'd be all over the place. Okay, do you, use, do you simply write them? Do you use any color coding or are you just making a list? Either or is fine. Uh, I, I pretty much just write it. Um, but I try to like leave a space between each class so I don't, you know, it doesn't look all messed up and jumbled together. Right, 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 right. Any, good, thank you. Anybody else doing anything different that's keeping them on track? I also do a planner, but I also, um, during the morning, I write a note card and then it's like my to-do list because normally I don't have a full note card that I have to do everything. So there's like four things that I know I have to do before tomorrow, before class. And just so that I can check them off each time I get something done. Mm -hmm. That's very rewarding and reinforcing those checking it off, isn't it? Okay. Um, thanks for sharing that. I think there's all sorts of ways to do that, but I, I don't see a substitute in this digital environment other than writing it down. Because if you're taking two, three, four, five classes that are all online, I don't have any clue how you could manage it in any other way. I've looked in people's Blackboard shelves. That's all I've been doing with students when they come in here, or even if I'm on the phone with them. It's just, it's just overwhelming. <laughs> and some people, some instructors feel like they're being very helpful by having lots and lots of words and descriptions in assignments. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, bullet point. But you can put some control to that by taking some time and looking them all over. Um, another thing that I skipped over, but um, somebody did mention about being able to focus. You know, that's a, that's a real deal thing. When you're at home, there's so much more going on than if you were sitting in a classroom. And what you described kind of, um, you, you know, you said you use a tutor to focus, but another thing you can do is um, work in very specific blocks of time. There's something called the Pomodoro method, where you actually, you look that up, you can set a timer. And for whatever length of time you think you can stay focused in, and they recommend 15 to 20 to 25 minutes, and it times you, and you try your, your best to stay completely in your task, and then you give yourself a five or 10 minute break. And Pomodoro is a productivity app. They find that people are more productive when they set specific shorter blocks of time to work and then take specific breaks. And what I would recommend too is that break be a, a physical break 
you know, get up, move your body around because we're all spending so much time, right? Sitting in chairs or, you know, whatever, sitting on our butts, doing all this work, getting up and moving around. And that's, that's your, your social media break too, you know, check your phone then if you've got important things coming in and, and do that. But setting those specific blocks of time helps you be um, more productive. Um, it's kind of a well-known method. So I encourage you to look that up. Um, if your home is not a place you can study, and I've talked to students who say this just it doesn't really work out here in my place. Um, and if you're able and willing to come to IVCC, it's important to know that we're still here. This place is still open for studying and you can come in here. The Learning Commons is open. You can see the hours there. Um, I would encourage you to call ahead because of lots of different issues going on in the Learning Commons sometimes. Um, schedules don't stay like they're supposed to. This because we live in COVID world in 2020 and nothing is easy ever or predictable. So call ahead and I put the phone number there. But people are coming. Um, I'm surprised sort of at last week, um, the number of students out here working out here because I think they find that this was their home base. This was their escape from the home environment where they could study. So you can use the learning commons, peer tutoring, and peer tutors are here in person um, for, during these hours where you can get their help. And if you feel you'd be even more focused by being right next to some, not right next to, but within proximity of someone, I should say, a safe distance from someone doing work, they're here to help. Um, and most days I've walked in there, they are not overwhelmingly busy. So I would encourage you to do that. And the library is open. They have nice, great, safe, clean spaces. Everybody's got protocols for cleaning up and making sure you're in a, as safe an environment as you can be. So um, the writing center is still all digital. You can make appointments there. So it's not anywhere you can go, but you can get help there. But these environments are open, okay? Um, other ideas, and you might be able to jump in on this. Um, if, if again, home isn't, um, well, I'm going to continue on this and then I'll skip back to um, other ideas. Um, reach out for help. Like I said, you can reach out to instructors. Counselors can help you if you're really struggling with some personal issues. They can't do long-term counseling, but they can help you and maybe help you move forward with academic or personal issues. If you wanna work on any study strategies, I do a lot of that with people. I've been doing a lot of note-taking guidance um, in the past couple weeks. I'm, I'm learning that instructors are favoring timed open book tests. And if you don't take good notes, you're not, you're not gonna do well on a timed open book test. So if you need strategies for that, strategies for test prep, I, I'm happy to meet over Zoom, over phone, in person, whatever. Reach out so you can be most efficient. Um, other plan Bs, if you can't get to campus and you're able and willing to go out, we, we did a, like a, a little survey and Peru, Princeton and Streeter libraries have um, computer space available by reservation on a limited basis. So those are places where you could go study and get out of the house if you needed to have some quiet time. Um, most other libraries aren't allowing patrons in for any length of time. Um, right now, I would suggest, you know, I'm looking over my shoulder because I got a window and it's like this week is going to be beautiful. Find a park, get outside, take some of your stuff. Um, Alondra, I don't know you could take all that stuff with you, but <laughs> maybe maybe a book or two and um, uh, I actually, yeah I actually do go to the park with my boys um it's because I'm in the nursing program so I have like seminar lecture and all that so it's that's why it looks like a hot mess because I have all my notes everywhere yeah well you have a lot I guessed that right away when you showed me your desk I knew you'd be in the nursing program I I, I could tell that right away yeah and the books are huge and you got so much going on right um but yeah, if you can take something, even if you've gotten to the point where you've pared down flashcards or something and you've got those, get outside. And then you guys might know more about this than me, but um, I've talked to students who, um, they get in their car and they leave their home and they find public Wi-Fi and park somewhere and get some things done. I don't think that's ideal for all academic tasks, but I think maybe for reading a textbook or um, maybe taking notes or reviewing materials, that, that could be an option. 
does anybody have input on where people, I mean, Starbucks always seems to be the place to go, but are there other options that you know in public where you could pull up nearby and, and use, jump into their Wi-Fi? Nobody? Would you be McDonald's? I was just going to say McDonald's, Cynthia. Would you be able to do that at McDonald's maybe? I would think most fast food places probably, right? Yeah. Um, you can do that. It's again, less than ideal, but if you park yourself away in the parking lot, you know, not facing people or something like that. And if, and I'm, I'm saying this as a last ditch effort, I'm not saying use this as your, your primary studies, you know, tool, but I, I've worked with people who, do, they don't have many choices. And I've talked with people who are desperate to be out of their homes because it's not a very conducive environment to learning. So you have to use what you've got, I guess, so. Um, then um, another thing that I'd want you to consider is um, you at IVCC. Um, what I've included on here um, is a link to a little bit of over, overview of you. Has, has anybody here set up an account for you at IVCC? I see one head nodding yes. I, I don't see all the heads on my screen right now, so I don't know who's um, nodding it or saying yes. But I wanted to show you something. If I can try this, let me see if I can maneuver myself. Um, um, you is a well-being portal for those of you who don't know it, and it's got a lot of resources for academic and personal well-being. And I, I went in and found some resources that I wanted to quick show you. Um, so I'm going to sign in. Um, you, you have to, you could create an account if you haven't already um, with your K number ID, and then it'll send a confirmation um, password to your email. Sometimes it ends up in junk mail. So um, the portal has lots of resources for academics. If you go into the Succeed tab, Thrive um, for personal well-being. So all that, you know, stress, anxiety, fitness, nutrition. And then Matter has stuff for connection, purpose, balance. Um, what I wanted to show you is when you go into any of the content, you can, you can save it. And I've, I've done that. I went in and I kind of marked some of the things I saw. So you're seeing my you screen, correct? Yes. Okay. So um, you can set goals for yourself. If you look up here, there's a way to set specific goals. And sometimes just setting goals gives you purpose and meaning and focus, whether that's getting a certain grade in a class or, um, you know, meeting a certain deadline or things like that, you can go in and create your own goals or follow theirs. Um, some of the resources that they have in the portal are short articles. Like this is just reminding us that we got to take a break sometimes in our routine and you got to breathe and step back to stay focused. And generally you, you'd said that kind of already that you got to step away and <laughs> to be able to focus. But then there's tips and hints for how to stop procrastinating and that these are probably short articles, um, the ones up here that I just showed you. Um, this was great because this is what a lot of us are doing, juggling family work, online classes, not only for ourselves, but for everybody else in our family as well. So there's tips and hints here. Um, this is a short little video. Um, Nathan is the guy who's kind of the mastermind behind a lot of this portal and he does a lot of little videos. He's a he's a psychologist so he gets all this stuff and he talked about the importance of getting up and moving um, and I thought that was kind of a good reminder. And then the U portal has you know short articles about online learning at home or being more productive or like I talked about monotasking to really focus in. So I would invite you to use the resources in that portal. And then some of this is other stuff that I've saved, but you can see some of the content that's available to you. Um, if you're really having a stress moment, the square breathing tab can be very helpful. Um, teaches you how to slow down and back off for a minute. So there's lots and lots of stuff in the portal that can help with managing um, your time and helping you organize yourself with giving you tips and hints. So I know I, it's 1030. Does anybody else have anything, any words of wisdom to add? 
Tina, do you remember, this might have been in one of your workshops, but we had a student who was a mom and had a lot going on at home and she had a home office in her bathroom. She put a desk in her bathroom, was that in, do you remember that? No, I bet that does. Um, you know what? Yeah. I think I, think I don't have a do. big enough bathroom to do that in, but she said that was the only place in her house where she could go, and she sat a desk in there and 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 would do her work nice and quietly in there. So that was being creative with her, right. what kind of space she had. Yeah, and I think the bottom line is you've got to use what you've got, and when you, when you if you are slammed for time and resources, you've got to be as efficient as you can. So using all that time management and organization and reaching out for help when you can is is. I, I think imperative. Um, so, okay, those are my my words of wisdom. All easier said than done. All easier said than done. But um, I'm telling you, visualize things, get it on paper, get the stuff out of your head so you can have some space to concentrate. It'll get you a little little further than maybe where you you had been. So. We're going to do another workshop with Tina um, in a couple of weeks on Tuesday, September 29th on test prep um, and taking tests. And so she'll talk a little bit more in detail then about, about the actually how to, how to take good tests and how to do better on your tests. Okay. Can, can I run one odd non-related question uh, past the, the people who are participating today? Um, I'm working on, um, um, I do a mental health awareness thing, um, usually in October, and I'm trying to put some things together. We used to, as part of our mental health stuff, have therapy dogs on campus. I don't know if anybody ever got to visit with the therapy dogs, but um, they were a big hit here. I am thinking of doing a virtual therapy dog um, visit. What do you think of that idea? I, honestly, stupid, <laughs> fun, what do you think? Students. What do you say? I think it's funny. I wouldn't call it stupid, but it's fun. It could be fun. I mean, totally wacky, yeah. Um, evidence shows that if you even look at pictures of nature or animals, it reduces your stress and anxiety levels. So that's where the cuckoo idea of this is coming from. And I just thought, well, maybe that would be a fun way to take a moment. I know everybody else has their own pets, but some people don't, and it might be fun to do that, so. Okay. I've been looking at a lot of cat videos like on Instagram when because I've been so stressed through this whole thing and I love cats and I can just sit there and go through all these people who post pictures of their cats doing things and, and dogs and it is very relaxing. It just kind of gets your mind away for a minute so I yeah. kind of get that. Yeah and we've had the dogs here and they're kind of our, our dogs so I thought maybe it would be nice for them to pop in so okay. Well, thank you. Um, good luck. If you've got questions, if you need any help with study stuff, let me know. I'm happy to help out, okay? Thank you so much, Tina. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Tina. Bye, everyone. Awesome. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. We're back Friday at 10 for a powwow. So oh, well. join yeah. us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll see you then on Friday morning. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Diane, you're going to take the recording off. I'm going to take it off, yes. Okay. You got it? I think so, yeah. I think I did. Oh no, there it is. Up there. Stop recording.